A car chase started here in Brooklyn Park Monday night when police say someone called in a suspicious person trying to steal a catalytic converter off of a parked van. The suspect fled into Minneapolis where the driver lost control, crashed, and then was arrested by police. Catalytic converter thefts continue to be a problem for Minnesota cities, contributing to higher crime rates. Here's how the numbers stack up in our area. We contacted all local police departments to get the latest numbers from 2022. These numbers are catching the attention of lawmakers. A bill in the Minnesota House would make it harder to sell catalytic converters without ID numbers. It would require more extensive documentation and training for dealers. One of the things that we never talk about is how much the um, cities who are taking, I mean, we just heard Coon Rapids, one report a day. This is a tremendous cost to each of our local communities. Opponents to the bill say scrap dealers are already highly regulated and should not face further penalties. Brooklyn Center is home to a unique and very important place called Crescent Cove. Crescent Cove is the only residential children's respite and hospice home in the state and it opened in 2018. We sat down to learn what's next for the facility in today's Newsmakers with Manager of Communication and Engagement, Jenny Floria. Crescent Cove offers care and support to families of children who have shortened life expectancies and to the parents and their extended family who love them. Uh, we do this by providing respite care for families. So many times these are children who have complex medical conditions. Their parents are caring for them, providing advanced medical care to them 24 seven. They can bring their child to Crescent Cove. We take over all of the medical care for them and we also provide an amazing experience for them. And their parents can take a break, recharge, spend time with other kids in the household and those kinds of things. It's one of the few facilities like this in the entire country, so I would assume there is a demand for this care. There is a demand for this care, yes. There are only three children's hospice and respite homes in the United States. The other two are on the West Coast. So we are the only one in the Midwest, and we served more than 200 families in 2022, and more than 344 families over our lifetime as an organization. All right, you guys are looking to grow this next year. We are looking to grow. Uh, as you can imagine, the pandemic was challenging for us and for all nonprofits that serve families like the ones we serve. Um, and so we did not close our doors and we've been slowly growing to capacity after that. Our goal in 2022 was to serve four children per night. And our goal for this coming year is to be able to serve five children per night, which brings us to capacity. All right. Uh, what else are you guys advocating for this next year? Yeah. You know, one big thing that we are advocating for this year is reimbursement for end of life care for children. Uh, I think people assume that because hospice care is covered by Medicaid and by health insurance for adults, that the same is true for children, and it actually isn't. Uh, we do not bill uh, families health insurance for it. We know that it will not be paid and we don't want to burden the families for that, so our, our families pay nothing out of, out of pocket for care, and currently Medicaid does not cover end-of-life care for children. So you guys are going to be advocating to get that changed? We are. We are going to be working with the Minnesota legislatures this year and working to get that changed. All right. Now, if folks see this and they want to try to be a part of what you guys do there to help in some way, what do you recommend that they do? A couple of key ways that people can help. One is to help donate to support our home. We are funded 76% from the generosity of our community. And that is really incredible because that helps us keep our doors open. We also rely on more than 150 volunteers every single year to support our home. Our volunteers do everything from playing with the children, providing special uh, experiences for them, to cleaning our house and mopping up and baking amazing uh, meals for the families and the kids who are there. All right, plenty of ways to help. Information available on your website. Yep, crescentcove.org. Very good. Jenny Florio with Crescent Cove, thank you for being here today. Thank you. A Golden Valley family has transformed their backyard into a money-making oasis. As Delane Cleveland reports in this week's edition of Business Matters, the therapeutic benefits of saunas are gaining steam across the state. We've got lounging area, fire pit. In the backyard of Craig Ringsven's Golden Valley home, Put it on a splitter. he's constructed an outdoor oasis of sorts. I can't even tell you how many hours total have been put into it, but probably well over a thousand. Craig started this home improvement project during the COVID shutdown of 2020. 
He began with a sauna, followed it up with a plunge pond. We don't heat the water. And then it just started to grow. We've thought long and hard about coming up with one word to describe the whole area, and um, oasis was the best we've come up with. A year and a half ago, some friends convinced him to turn this oasis into a business. Today, it's called the Nordic Nook, a getaway for anyone who wants to explore the therapeutic benefits of a sauna in the middle of a Minnesota winter. We've got our wall of fame. So far, it's had well over a thousand bookings. I don't even believe it when I hear it. I, I think we originally thought, hey, if we could get a couple bookings a week, you know, and a little extra fun money, a little fun side hustle. The Nordic Nook is just one of many sauna-related businesses to pop up across the state in recent years. So here we have the yurt. Craig gave us a quick tour to help explain the appeal. So inside here... The insulated tent has a wood-burning stove, along with several other amenities, where guests can relax. Outside of the yurt, there's a plunge pond where the water is kept around 39 degrees. He says a dip in the cold water helps with muscle soreness. We like to make your cold plunge as comfortable as possible. So down here, we've got heat mats. And of course, you have the sauna, which is the big draw for the 30 bookings they get per week. Now, I am way overdressed to be in here, but if you're looking to escape the cold, they keep the sauna between 180 and 200 degrees. Hot cold therapy is really catching on right now. There's lots of good uh, research out there to show the health benefits. And it gets nice and steamy for you. It's something that's turned into a nice side business for this physical therapist. In Golden Valley, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. A Wyzetta High School junior is part of the first family of Trojans Nordic skiing. In this week's CCX Sports Spotlight, we meet this accomplished skier and runner. I love this sport. Indeed, most winter days, you'll probably find Daniel McCuller somewhere on skis. I'm skiing all the time. <laughs> Whether it's practicing or competing, Wysetta High School Junior has a passion for the sport. I've always loved skiing, and I've, I've done it since I was probably that tall. And it's just always been something exciting to me. And it's something I love. He's had a tremendous season. He's been uh, top U18 a couple weekends at Junior Nationals, top uh, Lake Conference skier at a couple of our races as well. McCollar finished fourth at the state high school meet last winter. His Wysetta team placed third. It was a big highlight for the then high school sophomore. Ecstatic. It was, it was a big day and it, it certainly hurt, but it was very, very fun for me and very exciting to get the second place time too for the skate race. And I was not expecting that at all. The McCollar family is quite accomplished in this sport. Hit number one for Wysetta. Daniel's oldest sister Mara was a two-time state high school champion and now skis at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire. Lauren McCollar, a 2021 Wyzetta grad and a state meet qualifier in her day, now competes for Northern Michigan. Having two older sisters around when Daniel first joined Wyzetta's team in seventh grade was a big help. I always had someone to push me and especially coming into Nordic as a seventh grader, I was, I was a little bit scared, I'll be frank. It's, it's always a little terrifying the first time like having them to push me and like showing me kind of a path. Like many, but not all, high school Nordic skiers, Daniel's a runner too. He placed 16th at November State High School League meet. He was part of a Trojans team that won both state and cross nationals too. That was a big deal to us because last year we did it and we want to do it next year. And I think as a cross country team, we moving forward, we are going to be really good. We love seeing the athletes that run cross country in the fall, ski in the winter, run track in the spring, and I think it definitely adds to the, uh, the resilience of the athletes, working those muscle groups, and also building up great endurance over the winter, uh, fall, winter, and spring. Daniel is also a member of the Minneapolis Ski Club, often practicing twice a week and racing for MSC on the weekends. It's a lot, and the 16-year-old estimates he skis well over 1,000 miles a winter. And while he would love to win a state title for himself and his school and excel for his club team, personal goals aren't what matter to Daniel McCollar. Rather, it's all about the team. You're not an individual in this sport. Like, you always have a team behind you. And I always think about them and like pushing through for them. 
in the end, we're, we're a team. Nothing else matters. McCuller and his Wyzetta teammates will ski in the Lake Conference Championships Tuesday at Highland Park Reserve in Bloomington and the following week at the Section 6 meet. The State Nordic meet is for February 15th and 16th at Giants Ridge in Bewabek. Daniel isn't sure where he will go to college in two years, but says he plans to study environmental engineering. For the CCX Sports Spotlights, I'm John Jacobson. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media. Jason, let's go see your room. Thank you.